Yeah, everything anyone will ever need. Like <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's basically once you've been in this, you won't need to do anything else ever again yeah, in life. You're just be that good. Sitting on the beach with a coconut, living the dream. Yep. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. Hello, podcast listener, and welcome to episode 10 of the Active Marketer Podcast. I'm your host, Barry Moore. This week, we've got another interview for you, and it's with John McIntyre, the autoresponder guy. John's a crackerjack copywriter over there at themcmethod.com. And since a marketing automation is absolutely zero use to you without good copy inside of it, I decided to have John come on the show and we're talking about what kind of sequences you need in your business, how you need to go about planning out that copy to make sure it's as effective as possible. We're also doing a webinar on the 1st of April. We talk a little bit about that in the podcast, and I'll be sending out an email to all you guys shortly with with all the details and how you can use copywriting with marketing automation to build yourself an automatic selling machine. All right, before we get into that episode, as always, it's the Shameless Social Proof segment where we read out iTunes reviews. We got another five-star review in the iTunes store. It's from Michaela from Trades VA. It says, love the great tips, great content, and guests. I seem to learn something new in each episode. Well, thank you very much, Michaela. Uh, I love your podcast as well. It's a really, really great resource for anybody that owns a business. And you can find that at the Trades Business Show podcast. Just do a search in iTunes. I'm sure you can find it. All right, so let's get into this week's episode with John McIntyre. I'd like to welcome to the show now John McIntyre, copywriter extraordinaire over there at the McMethod.com, also widely known as the autoresponder guy. John, welcome. Thanks for having me, Barry. It's good to be here. Pleasure. I really wanted to get a copywriter on board because a lot of the questions I get from the people at the Active Marketer is all about, yeah, I've got this great tool or I want to move to our marketing automation, but they really don't know how to drive it. So maybe if we, we start out talking about marketing automation systems and then we can talk a little bit about what kind of copy you need to put in there to get your business humming. Does that sound all right? Sounds good to me, man. Let's do it. All right. Uh, I think a lot of the people that probably come to me and probably a lot of them that come to you as well have probably gone the normal route of they know they're supposed to build a list, so they put some sort of opt-in on their website, and that gets people onto this list in the back. And most people probably start with MailChimp or AWeber or something like that. And then if they use it for a while, they find out that those systems kind of <laughs> quickly become unscalable. Well, you end up with 20 different lists with 20 different opt-ins and all that kind of stuff. Right. And so, so then the normal the normal progression is there, well, I need to move on to a marketing automation system like Entreport or Infusionsoft, Active Campaign, Drip, something like that. Something that allows me to have one list and tag those people uh, based on their behavior, based on their interests or whatever. Uh, but the question I get from a lot of people is, all right, I've got this great marketing automation tool. I've just bought it. I've set it all up, I'm ready to go. What do I do with it then? You know, and that all comes down to copywriting. So you are the autoresponder guy. So what are the most kind of common autoresponder series that people need to be using in their business? Hmm. Oh, I think it's uh, you know it helps to take a step back to go to you know first of all like why you know why even have one in the first place? Fair because enough, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, there's not. It's very hard to prescribe. Say you need to have these three sequences or these five sequences. What you know, what's uh, what's really important when you go into this kind of game is that you need to think strategically. You know, the person who thinks or has the most strategic mindset is usually going to you know get the best results. So it's not about just you know like say sign. A lot of some people think it is as simple as going and getting say Active Campaign or one of the other marketing automation platforms, and you sign up and you you know add some emails, and then you're going to make a million dollars, make millions. <laughs> Isn't it but, not how it works? <laughs> I, you know, I wish. It's not, uh, you know, it's not as simple as that. The software is only really as powerful as, as the person using it. It's sort of like the vehicle. You, know, you could have a Ferrari, but if you don't know how to drive it, uh, you're not going to go very far. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a bit like that. Like Active Campaign and these you know these platforms, they're really really powerful. And and this is why we're talking about it here, right? So people can you know instead of just sitting there and using you know using Active Campaign to do the same thing that Aweber does, when they could just have Aweber, um, you know, is to 
you got to map things out. You got to really figure, think, think about from like strategically with that big picture perspective about what really matters. And then you go into the nuts and bolts of like, all right, we need these three campaigns and we can add them and then we can write those emails. So about those campaigns, the way to think about it is, is, is really to answer the question of why use, why use marketing automation in the first place. And the reason why is that when, you know, when someone visits your site and uh, they sign up to the email list, chances are within the, the, the running of your business, there's going to be a bunch of different times when you're going to want to email people. And you know, one of those times is going to be when they first sign up, depending on the business model, that when they first sign up, you want to at least say, hey, either get them on the phone, tell them about a product, that you've got something like that. There's going to be a sequence as well when they become a customer. Once they become a customer, you want to put them on some kind of a campaign so that they get, they're get receiving communication from you on a regular basis. So you stay top of mind. And so they, you know, they respect you and they know you as the leader, uh, you know, as the main authority, you know, in that niche or in that industry. So that's what that's going to do. And you're also going to be able to sell them stuff afterwards because there's a lot of the, um, you know, as a lot of people find out when the, once they get more experience with business is that the money is really in, in the back end. You, you make most of the profit selling to people who've already bought stuff. So you're going to want to have an email list for your customers. So that's two segments. So a segment is, you might say a batch or a, a uh, section, you know, it doesn't really matter what you call it, but basically a group of people within your audience, within your entire list. So a segment, maybe you have a thousand people on your email list and 500 of them, that would be a segment. Okay. So you've got two segments right there. People who just sign up, prospects and then customers. And you don't want to be sending, the reason you use marketing automation stuff to get a bit more advanced with this is that you don't want to be sending your customers emails that are going to your prospects because you're probably asking your prospects to buy stuff and, uh, and if, you, if you're asking your customers to buy stuff that they've already bought, you're going to look unprofessional and they're also going to think, probably think you're a bit pushy and uh, you're just not I'm very good at setting this whole thing up. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, that's, I, I hate that when like I've already bought a product from you and you keep selling me that product. Exactly. And it happens a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's, and, and that's really the why of like, all right, so there you want a couple of different segments. The problem with AWeber and MailChimp is that it, man, it's a pain in the ass to do you know, your automatic automatic segmenting, um, basically marketing automation uh, with, with AWeber or MailChimp or any of the free platforms. It's just, it's, it, it's clunky. It's, uh, yeah, AWeber doesn't even have some of these features. You have to buy additional add-ons to AWeber to actually make it work like this. So what marketing automation software is going to do is it's going to allow you to email some of these segments in a more streamlined fashion so that when someone buys the product, they're automatically removed from the prospects list and added to the customer list. And it automatically knows that they're a customer, so it's not going to send them the emails that are going out to the prospects. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. And then so, so that, I mean, that's just to start with. So then as far as like when it comes to the campaigns and to go back to the original idea of looking at, you got to look at the big picture is in every business, there's going to be different, different segments and there's going to be a different, and part of that's to do with like a different sales cycle in the sense of, you know, if you've got a, a long sales cycle that might take anywhere, let's say four to six weeks where you want to get on the phone, you want to have a, you know, a quick chat. This is something I do, right? I get on the phone with someone for about 20 minutes to find out if they're a good fit. And if they're not a good fit, I'll, I'll basically say, here's, here's the advice I can give you, but we can't help you right now. You need to go and do this first. And then some of those people that I chat to for 20 minutes, I'll book another call in uh, with them a few days or a week later for an hour. And then I'll have another one for an hour later on where I'll pitch them. And so with that, but see, I have that segment and I also have a segment where people want to, uh, they, don't, they don't want to hire me. They just want to write their emails themselves. So I don't want to be sending the people who want to write their emails themselves the same emails that I'm sending to the people who would rather just hire me because they require different things. The people who want to write them themselves, they need a product that's going to teach them how to write it themselves. And the people who want to hire someone, they just need to get on the phone with me. Exactly, exactly. So, so what you can do with the, the marketing automation with something like uh, Active Campaign is instead of uh, – like, you can't really do this with AWeber. You might be able to do this with MailChimp, but Active Campaign makes this really easy. Because you can, when someone signs up, you can then say, offer them a survey where you say, you know, would you rather write your emails yourself or hire someone to write them for, uh, for you? And then based on what they click, they will go into a different uh, sequence or a different campaign within the software and be uh, sent the communication that they need to make that, you know, the decision to buy the product or to get on the phone with me and have a chat. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I want to loop back to some gold nuggets there. Yeah. So that just to, to tidy that one up, 
Yeah, it's all about getting the right message to the right customer at the right time, right? You want to hit them with the message that they're most receptive at that time. So if they've expressed an interest in product X, Y, Z, don't show them product ABC information or don't, yeah, as you said, don't try to pitch to somebody who doesn't actually want your product. So you need to get, you need that segmenting there to make sure that you're sending the right message to the right segment at the right time. But I wanted to loop back. There was a gold nugget there that we just kind of glossed over there and that, um, your gold is really those customers that have bought from you before or those customers that have just bought from you. As soon as they buy from you, you want to start warming them up to, to what you do, why they should be happy about their, their, their decision to buy that, how they're going to get the most out of that product or service that they just bought. Um, so that one, you eliminate buyers or more straight off the bat. So they know like, all of a sudden they're getting, you know, a five to seven day onboarding sequence where it's telling them, Oh, thank you very much for, for buying our product or buying our service. Here's where you can get the support. If you have any questions, go here. Uh, here's a couple of videos on how you can get started straight away. And then the next day it might be, here's some key features or here's some key common mistakes that people make when they're starting out. Make sure you avoid those by doing this, this, and this. Here's some key features that are really going to take you to the next level. You might want to investigate this and this. So you're, you're, you're holding their hand through the whole, through the whole purchase post purchase process uh, and making them feel really, really good about the decision. And then at the end of that sequence, you can either hit them up for a cross sell or uh, more importantly, maybe hit them up for a testimony or a referral to somebody else while they're feeling happy about the decision they just made. Mm, mm, exactly. I mean, part of this is like, you want to have one of the easiest ways to, you know, add in some profit is to just sell an upsell, which is, you know, what McDonald's, does when they sell you, you know, would you like fries with that? It's, you know, would you like a drink with that? And so like the easiest time to make a sale is right after you've just made a sale. But then once it comes to that email sequence, you, yeah, you can help, you can walk them through the product. What you can also do is you can set up a campaign where, you know, basically instead of just sending people, all right, you bought this product, now are you interested in this one? You could actually find out and be like, well, send them an email about, you know, about X topic. So like if we're doing online marketing, you could send them an email about SEO and then link to an article uh, that does, you know, SEO. So what's going to happen is when they get that email, they'll then be, uh, you can use the software that say tag them with SEO. So basically you'll find out when someone clicks that, that they're interested in search engine optimization. And when you know that they're interested in that, then you want to send them information specifically related to search engine optimization. So what you do is if you've got a you know, search engine optimization product or service, before, before you just go and email them about the product, what you do first is you send them an email that says something about search engine optimization, then links to something. And then if they link to it, if they, if they, sorry, if the prospect clicks the link in that email, they, uh, the software will then trigger out a, you know, a promotion sequence for the search engine optimization. It takes them off that list, puts them onto a different email list, sends them that communication to sell them that product, makes them much more likely to buy because they're getting something that's specifically targeted to them because they're actually interested in SEO. Anyone who's not interested won't even get those promotion emails. And the person after those three email promotion segments will get automatically transferred back to the main list and go back into it and get more emails. So you can think about it. It's sort of like a maze. You know, everyone kind of it's choose your own adventure yeah. when it comes to email marketing. And it's going to make such, a, such a, an amazing difference over the long term in the business. Yeah, I was talking to Andre Chaperone. I was actually in, uh, I was talking to James Schremko as well. And I think he, I asked him how many sequences he had in his business. I think he said from memory, I think it was like 53 or 56 or something like that. That was Andre or no, James? No, that was James. Um, Andre, huh. I know Andre does a very similar thing. You know, he drops people off the soap opera sequence onto some sub sequence and then brings them back again. Um, but yeah, so which, which brings up a good point. I was talking to Jason Vanderboom, CEO of, uh, active campaign the other day. And I asked him, what's the common mistake most people make when they start using the platform? And he, he said, failure to plan, you know, in our three pillars are design, automate and scale and designs of <laughs> designs, the first one for a very good reason. You need to think through how you provide value for your customer and how, what paths through your business you want them to take, or you want to guide them on so that you can pre plan out those tags and those sequences ahead of time. And then it all just works. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, John, you've you've got a lot of people come through your business wanting autoresponders. What are the what are the common ones that 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 most people seem to need in their business? All right, you've got. The, the, I mean, the most common ones are going to be number one is going to be the prospect sequence. So, someone visits the site and they sign up and they they buy something. Oh, sorry, they don't buy. They haven't bought anything yet. So they sign. They they basically sign up and they they need uh, some kind of sequence that's going to convert uh, the prospects and the customers and get them to buy. Usually a cheap product, which is called like you know a loss leader or a tripwire or something like that. 
that would be one sequence. So getting the getting you know first time prospects you've never bought anything to make a purchase. Uh, another sequence is uh, say for customers, and it might be a straight sequence for you know customers you've bought one product that just does you know six emails or you know ten emails or something like that that sends it out and uh, converts them into into into, uh, into basically makes them buy more more product. Okay, and they'd be the main ones. I mean, to be honest, it's not. Uh, it's not. You can go as complex as you, you know, complex as you want with this. And an example is uh, a client that, uh, that I'm working with right now. And so, but, so he sells one product, and then after he's got about five or six other products. There's two funnels, and there's about five or six products per funnel. And so he'll sell one product, and then what he wants to do is automate the process by which he follows up with those customers after that. And because he wants to, he sends out broadcasts and he makes some okay money from that. But what he wants to do is then, instead of that, uh, create this automated process so that he can walk away and go sit on the beach while his you know automated email uh, system goes and makes those sales for him. And uh, what uh, what we're going to put together, or what we're going to do with him, is it'll be that sequence that I just mentioned. You call it like the evergreen rotation funnel. Um, and the way it works is you've got email one is a content email, right? So let's say someone buys a product and and they've had the upsell and then you've all right, so great, thanks for buying the product. Here's some other cool stuff. After we've finished that, so you might only have two or three emails after they bought the product. Then it's like, what next? And this is, I think, something, if you have a number of different products, I think this could work really, really well. And so what you do is you get you send out one content email. And well, by content is really just goodwill. Say something cool, give them a tip, give them some great information, touch base with them, something, something just kind. No, you're not trying to pitch them. Email number two is a trigger email. And that's so you might maybe write something about S, you know, search engine optimization. And if they click that link, they get moved to a separate list. So they're removed from that main list and they go to a separate list. And and they they get three or three or four email promotion for a product that you sell about search engine optimization. And if they don't buy, whether they buy or they don't buy, at the end of that four email sequence, they go back to the main list again. Now the people who who visit the sales page and don't buy, you can you can uh, use the software to be like, well, if they visited this page but they didn't buy, send them this email. So if at any point during that four email promotion they visited your you know website and they didn't buy, you can then trigger an email to them and say, hey, we noticed you visited the page, but you didn't buy. Here's 10% off or something like that. So you can remind them to go back. We could say, just, just remind them that it's still there. It's waiting for them. And here are the benefits. And then maybe email two, you could say, well, here's a discount because we st- you still haven't bought it yet. So then we come back. And then so whether they buy or they don't buy, they go back onto the sequence. Uh, the original sequence, where it was the content email and the trigger email. And when they get back on there, they get another content email to establish the goodwill and the rapport and the trust again. And then they get another trigger email, this time for, say, pay-per-click marketing. And they go through that uh, that four email promotion sequence again if they click on that link. And so you might have five or six products, and this is what we're doing with this client. They might have, say, six products, so six rotations. And what's cool is when they get to the, the rotation, the end of rotation number six, some people would think that that's the end of the funnel. And it could be. Or what you could do is just then when they finish the end of that sequence, you could just take them all the way back to the beginning. Absolutely. So it's, and I think that's, that's so then you have this ongoing, if that was a three-month sequence, that three months would just be running in you know, perpetuity. It would be running all the time. And I think that's pretty powerful. Yeah, and you can keep track of which sequences you don't want to drop them into based on the tags they have. So exactly, you know, the way that you can kind of track the lifestyle of or the life cycle of one of these customers is basically all you need is three tags, right? So you need a prospect tag. So this person's a prospect for our service. Then you need a lead tag. So they've they've expressed an interest in this particular service. So they if they've come and they, like you said they've clicked on the SEO page and they've had a look at it and they've read it and they may go back a couple of times. Well now they're a lead for that. They've expressed an interest in it. So we tag them with a lead tag for SEO, and then once they've bought, and then we tag them with a customer tag for SEO. They're actually a customer of that service now. So then when we when we start looping back through the sequences, you can just say you know if this if this person is a customer has the customer SEO tag, well then don't send them. Don't send them down this particular sequence. That's right. Yeah. So that's the real power behind it is is that you is you is you know your customer and you you get it, you build kind of their, they choose their own adventure as you said and they build their own customer profile and they build their own interest uh, interest map basically or you know we use topic tags to keep track of what topics people are interested in so that and we know if if someone has this particular topic tag they've they've looked at these pages on our website so they've got a topic tag of you know automation or whatever um, that we know they're interested in we can start customizing which sequences they get based on what topics they're interested in. 
Mm. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful when you think about it. Yeah, it's it's great. You're having the customers self-select what messages they want to receive. It's yeah, it's, it's brilliant, really brilliant. Mm. So, what's the best way for people to get started? You know, if they obviously, uh, you know, they can they can come to you and get the copy written themselves, uh, or you know, perhaps join your community, learn how to do it uh, themselves, or get you to do it straight off the bat. But is there is there a kind of a methodology you go through to figure out what copy needs to be in those emails? There, I mean, there is, but like, I mean, once again, it needs to go back to that planning stage of when. Uh, like uh, your man at Active Campaign mentions, where you, before you do any of that, you, before you start writing copy, you need to figure out which segments you're going to write the copy for. So instead of just sitting down to, all right, well, I'm going to write these emails, sit down and figure out what segments do you have. You know what? What? How could you split up your audience into into you know specific groups that require different, you know that really that really would be benefit from getting different information from you. So you've obviously got prospects and customers, but then you might have people who maybe you've got prospects for one type of product and prospects for the service, or prospects that you know who, who just joined and then prospects who have moved on to the second stage. Maybe they've had one phone call with you, so you want them to, you want to put them onto a different sequence after they've had a phone call, and so you can do all these you know interesting things like that. Now the size of your business and the amount of leads you're getting is going to affect how 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 much it's going to be worth, you know, going to that kind of effort. But before you do anything, before you do any of the technical, like sitting down and writing stuff. You really want to figure out what are those segments. And then once you have those segments, it's just figuring out, figuring out what do you need to say to them to move them to the next step. So, you know, with, with mine, you know, when it comes to the services, I'm not trying to sell those services, you know, on the site because it's, like, it's quite expensive to hire me. So someone's not going to pay the fee that I'm asking, you know, just on a web page via PayPal. It's, just, it's not going to happen. Plus, it's custom. So I can't give them a, a stock price. So what I do is get them on the phone. So the step is, number one, to get them to reply to an email. And then step two is to get them on the phone as soon as possible. And because I understand that, that's sort of, that, you know, that's how the emails work. It's very simple. I mean, someone signs up, first email just says, hey, thanks for getting in touch. I just saw you visited this page and uh, you're, you're looking for an email copywriter. You know, when's a good time to have a chat? Like, it's, it's that easy. And, uh, you know, if you want to send out, like, content... It, Give them some tips. Talk, you know, talk to them about. Give them some advice that's uh, going to help them achieve an objective. It's it's like uh, people overcomplicate this. They think it's it needs you know need to be a great writer. You need to you know really understand words and and all that sort of stuff. And often it's just it's not really. You just think about who is this person and uh, what do I need to say to them? Like what, like what should I say to them? And most people can figure this kind of thing out when you know once you sort of get out of their own way. Yeah, for sure. And and uh, you touched on a good thing there too. Is is that a lot of people think of marketing automation or email marketing. You know, marketing automation is just sending out emails to people, but you can also use it to manage your own internal workflow and make sure that you've got touch points with your customers. So I do a very similar sort of thing when we talk automation with some of our customers. I want to get them onto Skype or I want to get them on a phone call so I can talk about their business and, and maybe plan out some of those segments with them on, on what they need to do and how they need to get it set up. Um, so in the background of active campaign, you know, I've got a pipeline set up that says, right, this person's, this person's expressed an interest in a call. So boom. All right. Let's schedule a call. Okay. The call's been scheduled. Uh, you know, now that sends me a reminder that there's a date that I need to talk to this person. So I need to do some prep work. And then afterwards I get another reminder from the system that I need to follow up with that person. So I'm automating the workflow. I'm not necess- and it's got nothing to do with emails going out. It's all got to do with the internal workflow within the business. So that's another great thing you can do with the marketing automation tool like Active Campaign that you can't do with those other ones like AWeber or MailChimp or something mm. like that. It's not just automating emails, it's automating your workflow. Yeah, exactly. So you don't miss a step and you don't leave a customer waiting there for some sort of contact or some sort of service from you that you haven't provided because it's fallen through the cracks somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. All right, John. Well, that was fantastic. I think that's given everyone a good kind of starting platform. So just to kind of to summarize that, you want to really sit down and plan out uh, your segments of your audience or your, your target audience and, and plan out those flows through your business. What do we want to offer them? Uh, what's the next step after they've done that? What's the next step after they've done that? You know, just get on a whiteboard, just get on a notebook, start mapping out your, your customer avatars, uh, and what you have to offer them. And then you can sit down and, and plan out the general flows and how you want to talk to them and when you want to talk to them. And then you can, you can go back and get that copy written or write it yourself and then start building those sequences 
inside your tool. And as you said at the very beginning, a tool is not a strategy. It's just a tool. A hammer is not going to build you a house if you don't have any building skills. So you really need a blueprint for what you want to do first, and then you can use these kind of tools to build it out. That's right. That's right. Nailed it. Beautiful. All right, John, um, I know you've got an upcoming webinar with a really fantastic <laughs> guest. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell everybody about that a little bit? All right, so this webinar. So the fantastic guest is uh, Barry Moore. Oh man, he's great. I yeah, love he's that amazing, guy. right? He's he's exactly uh, right. man. He's the he's the guru of gurus <laughs> when it comes to marketing automation. So basically, we uh, you know Barry and I decided to put together a webinar, uh, which is on more or less what we've talked about here. And the goal of the webinar is to teach you how to how to build a a completely automated uh, you know marketing platform for your business so that when someone comes into it, basically, so you can put leads in at the top, put traffic in at the top when someone visits your site and at the bottom, pop out leads and customers. So whether it's, you know, you want to get someone on the phone or you want to, you know, sell product, whether you want to get them to read an article, take action on something. The whole goal of this webinar is to give you a process that you can follow to set up, you know, what, what you might call an automatic sales machine. I know that sounds a little bit cheesy, but that's what it is. It's it's you know this is what marketing automation does is it is it allows you to automate that process from when someone joins using software and, and just emails, software and emails. It automates that entire process to take them from you know cold lead, uh, you know given gives them the information they need to make a decision. So it understands their psychology. You know, I want to teach you how to how to write the actual emails themselves, what to put in them, how to do your call to actions, and how to get them to your site or make them pick up the phone so they can you know they'll call you up and uh, and start handing you money to buy the stuff that you're selling. So that's what we're going to do on this webinar. I'm, I'm pretty pumped. It's in two weeks, yeah, right? Fantastic. We just uh, put together day to day. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And I think, it, you know, between the two of us, we've got everything that every someone needs to just get up and going with a turnkey solution to really pump their business and take it to the next level. Yeah, everything anyone will ever need. Like <laughs> that's it. right. That's right. Which, that's basically, once you've been in this, you won't need to do anything else ever that's again it. in life. You're just be that good. sitting on the beach with a coconut. Living the dream. Yeah, All right. yeah, you'll be a, a billionaire on the beach. But anyway, so the date, man, we should mention the date. It's uh, 3 p.m. Cent- well, yes, yeah, so we got 3 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, on April 1. So that'll be April Fool's Day, actually. So nice. we should. It, this is not an April Fool's joke. This is a real webinar, and it's happening on April Fool's Day in the U.S. You're going to be in Australia, Barry. Absolutely. I'll be getting up early to to drop some value bombs on everyone. Nice. So it'll be six. I think it'll be six a.m. where you are. It will. Good thing it's not a video webinar. <laughs> <laughs> you have to clean up your hair, right? Make I'll, sure it looks all. Well, I won't have to clean up my hair, but I'll be. I'll probably be in board shorts. <laughs> that's all right, man. I mean, that's that's what it's about, right? Someone sets up the platform, sets up that, so they can sit. You know, they can sit in board shorts too, right? That's the whole goal. Absolutely. Cool. So, uh, all right. Well, Barry, it's been good, man. Thanks, man. Looking forward to the webinar, brother. Yeah, that's some fun. Talk soon. See ya. there you go. Great interview with John McIntyre there. I'd like to thank him for stopping by the Active Marketer podcast. And uh, you can find all the show notes for this episode and leave us a comment over on theactivemarketer.com forward slash the autoresponder guy. And as we said, we'll be doing a webinar together on the 1st of April, so don't miss out on that. I'll be sending out details shortly and there'll be more details over on the show notes as well. So we see you next time back with another Tactical 20 podcast. See you next week, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.